And as we got in, not to my credit, to theirs, the other scientists first found um, scat. Or no, sorry, I found the scat. I don't remember. Somebody found poop. And I started freaking out. I was like, this is tortoise poop. Because tortoise poop's like that. You know, the only other thing on the island is like iguana poop, and it's like that. So I'm like, holy shit, there's a tortoise here. And it was still kind of damp. Did you encounter, I imagine, right away, scientists like, that's definitely not that. Of course. Um, yeah. Of and, course. How do you even... It, it just seems like there's people, and this relates to any field, that just have a preconceived notion on stuff, and you could take them to that wall right there and yep. have, you know, the ghost of Michelangelo come back <laughs> for art and the ghost of Leonardo da Vinci for science and art yep. and tell them scientifically why it's white, and they're going to say it's black. Correct. Yeah. Um, yes, we ran into lots of naysayers, lots of haters. Um, I mean, not lots, because it was pretty – like, that one – other ones, I literally held the extinct animal in my hand, you know, and there were still people that were angry. Like I found this tortoise that was, it was in Time Magazine and everything else. Like I literally like found it, um, the Fernandina Island tortoise, but- Fernandina Island? Mm -hmm. And that was a big deal. And that came with its own controversies. But no matter what we did, there was always some people getting upset, mostly because we broke the mold. I don't think it really had anything to do with me. I don't think it had anything to do with the wall being white or black. You know what I mean? I think it was just, we broke the mold of how things are supposed to be done, yeah. and that comes with hate. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Um, so what was the story here with the with the tortoise? Yeah, so that was some years later uh, on the season two, maybe a year and a half, two years later, we went to this volcanic island of Fernandina in the Galapagos, mm. a place that the California Academy of Sciences had only ever collected one other individual of the species in history 114 years prior, and we went there, teamed up with the Galapagos Conservancy and the National Park System. And they we didn't put any of this on camera because we didn't want to insult anybody. But they literally laughed at us when we said we're going to go look for this tortoise. They're like, you're wasting your time. It's so stupid. And then we went and found it. And then there was like a big upset of who found it and why was it me who'd just come in for four days after they hadn't found it in 114 years. <laughs> all this criticism. all this, And I just didn't give a shit and I still don't give a shit because we found the tortoise. Found all the I tortoise. care about is the tortoise. Yeah. I don't care about me finding the tortoise. There were two other guys, I won't name their names, who were like, we found the tortoise, not him. I'm like, yep, you did. Good job. Good for who you. gives a shit? It's all documented. It's all on camera. It was all on Animal Planet. S Whoever wants to take credit can take credit. All I care about is that we found the tortoise. What made you want to find that tortoise, though? Because there, there's so many. I mean, there's millions of species that are cool that you can learn about that yeah. are extinct. Like, yeah. you know, you land on these eight. So what right. What makes you go, this is the one right here. This is why I want to go to Fernandina and do this. It's a great question. So I live in Santa Barbara, like I said. Ojai, California, up the road from me, there's a place called the Turtle Conservancy. Okay. I'm just a nerd, right? Like I told you about reading the books and stuff. So I used to go up to the Turtle Conservancy, which is actually um, a guy from here, from New York, who started this that used to run nightclubs who's obsessed with turtles and tortoises. Albanian? Uh, no, he's not Albanian. No, he's not. I don't think so. <laughs> you ran nightclubs in New York? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Um, uh, the same guy who produced Tiger King, by the way. Um, yeah. What a career. It's a weird small world. Yes. But um, I used to go to the Turtle Conservancy and work with my friends up there. And they're like, you know, I was already aware of the Fernandina Island tortoise as a lost species and only one before 114 years, blah, blah, blah. But I met a scientist who was a Turtle Conservancy scientist who's like, I swear to you, Forrest, when I was there 30 years ago, I found bite marks in a cactus. I found tracks. There's a tortoise on that island. And I was like, oh, man. Like, look, I'm getting goosebumps talking about it. <laughs> yeah, you Because I got actually... so excited. Whoa. And I'm like, no way, dude. That's like, cool. There's a tortoise there. So we put this whole, yeah, you can see my hair's all standing Bro, up. Yeah. Like, I get so excited about this stuff. And so anyway, I put together all the research, got the permits, got chartered the boat, got the agreement from the Colombian government to let us go to that, sorry, Ecuadorian government to let us go to that specific island, blah, blah, blah. And then, yeah, just launched the mission. And then four days found it, found it in two and a half, three days. Yeah. And then spent another day looking for a mate, but we're like, we got to get out of here. We got to, we got to, cause the tortoise, when we found her, it's a female super, you can kind of see it in like that far. Uh, no, you can't really this see one? it. Super skinny, super sunken in eyes and stuff like that. So she was in pretty bad health. And the scientists I was working with from Fernandina, they, they made, or not from Fernandina, from the Galapagos, they made the decision they wanted to take her into the rescue facility. They have like a rescue center there and get her fat and get her hydrated and healthy and then try and find a male and breed them. And mate them. Yeah, and save the species. So we moved her off the island, which 
it was the right thing to do, but at the time I was like, is this the right thing to do? Yeah. Um, but it was a great discovery and I don't care. I don't even want to harp on like the criticism and the, the negativity because all that matters is that we brought millions of eyeballs, millions of eyeballs to the discovery of an animal that the world had given up on. Yeah. And that's awesome. How did you come up upon her? Like when you actually found her so again? So we, we spent the first day following the Galapagos scientists up to the top of the mountain because yeah. they had reports that the animals liked high veg high elevation, uh, you know, where there was more greenery, blah, blah. And then the second day I led us to a lower elevation area that I saw more trees. And I was like, let's check that area. And as we got in, not to my credit, to theirs, the other scientists first found um, scat. Or no, sorry, I found the scat. I don't remember. Somebody found poop. And I started freaking out. I was like, this is tortoise poop. Because tortoise poop's like that. You know, the only other thing on the island is like iguana poop, and it's like that. So I'm like, holy shit, there's a tortoise here. And it was still kind of damp. So it's like, this is within a week old. It's mm. boiling hot, rugged, gnarly environment. So You're saying like, the only other relatable thing would be iguana poop? Yeah, on right, that island. Right, because there's other types of animals. Yes, obviously. but yeah, the yeah, only yeah. thing that could look anything Got similar it. would be an iguana and it's half it's a fraction of the size Got it. so we found this and i'm like freaking out i'm like oh my god there is a tortoise here <laughs> this is tortoise poop like holding it screaming my head off getting excited and then a couple seconds later one of the scientists goes there's a bedding there's a den, den right here like where they bury into the sand you know to cool down yeah and you could see this like little bowl that it, it dug out to like rub its belly in so the the poop might have been a week old but the dig the little berry site's probably like a day old and literally minutes later, somebody, there was like eight of us there. It's like, a tortoise, a tortoise. <laughs> and I like dropped my water bottle and dove into this bush like it was a freaking cheetah. It was a tortoise. It couldn't go anywhere. Yeah. But like dove into this bush and grabbed this tortoise. Like, ah, like freak <laughs> There's videos of it online. But I was just freaking out because literally at that point in time, if you think about this, I was holding in my hand to this day the rarest animal in the world on planet Earth. The dire wolves the Colossal just brought back, there's three of them. This is one. One individual of this species in the last 114 years, period. The rarest animal, the crown jewel of rare animals I was holding in my this hand. definition of like grain of sand in yeah. the sand. Yeah. I mean. It was awesome. To yeah. find, that's so cool, man. You ended up finding eight of these total. Not tortoises, but eight not, different not total, lost animals. Not lost yeah. animals. Yeah. Now, real quick on the tortoise, though, they brought it back out of mm -hmm. the wild mm -hmm. and... Did they, did they find the mate, did you say? No, so they, they brought didn't. it back. They took it to the Fausto Lorena breeding facility, which is where that other famous tortoise, Lonesome George, was. I don't know if you ever heard that name. I don't know Lonesome George, no. It was a Pinta Island tortoise that was also the last of his species, and he spent like 100 years at this facility, and mm -hmm. people could visit him and stuff. So they took fern to that facility, and they've launched, I believe, four return expeditions to look for a mate since then. Haven't found any, you know. They never found any before I came there. They've never found any since. I'm not saying I'm the only reason, but there's certain tricks and tools. We gotta and send things. the Galante back. I didn't say that. You did, but I you said know. it. We're doing it. <laughs> yeah. So unfortunately, because they got upset about our finding and and you know the sort of machismo around it, they they haven't asked me to come back and look. But I'd happily go look for a male. Do we know how old she is approximately? <sighs> Somebody did some kind of like radio uh, isotopic analysis. I think she's around seventy or eighty years old. And how long would it would that species be able to live? One hundred fifty. About a hundred. Yeah, maybe 100. a little over a hundred. Yeah, like maybe one ten, something like that. So, she's healthy now, though. I think if we left her, so what's crazy is Fernandina Island. The island yeah. is one of the most volcanic islands in the world. So there's lava flows constantly taking place, and when you have a little patch of like jungle, right? It's not really jungle, but like scrubland and bush and trees and stuff. Then all of a sudden a lava flow comes down. It just just blankets that, kills oh, everything wow. there and it's gone. And it doesn't exactly regrow through lava. So an island that used to be relatively green and have lots of patches of greenery, there's now like two patches of real greenery left. Mm. So it's a relatively confined area. There is another tortoise there. I saw tracks of it. I'm almost certain. It's just hopefully a matter of time till they find it. But like a 70-year-old lady, she she could have kids? Yep. So unlike humans and other mammals, they can reproduce almost up until the day they die. Oh, wow. And they even have no spermal... No menopause. Nope. No menopause. And they even have spermal retention. So if she had mated with a male five years ago, she could have hung on to that sperm in her system and then laid eggs five years later. Oh, thank God humans don't have that. Holy yeah, shit. I know, right? Think how, many, think how many kids you'd have. Uh, <laughs> Said so I'm getting goosebumps now <laughs> for all the wrong reasons. <laughs> That's also pretty cool, though, that you found 
this one in the cradle of the evolutionary, yeah, you know, Our invention itself in, in, in the Galapagos Islands. That's a place I've never been. My parents went, I think, like 30 years ago. Uh huh. But I mean, that's that's got to be unlike anything else on Earth. No, that was my favorite discovery or find ever we found uh four shark species a primate species a caiman which is like a crocodile oh yeah yeah, yeah. i went to the amazon yeah you know of caimans. course you do yeah, yeah. yeah um but that that one that specific one finding that animal that was that rare to me that was the most incredible in, in like you said the cradle of our understanding of evolution yeah it was such a cool thing yeah wh where did you find the caiman again the rio apoporos area of colombia okay is that that's not touching the amazon Right. Uh, it does, but much further down than where I was. Okay. Yeah. It is Amazonian, though. It is, it is, it Amazonian, is Amazonian there. Yeah, I'm but it doesn't to touch that. the Amazon River. We were on a river called the Rio Apoporos River. Okay, yeah. got it. Yeah, the, 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 the whole trail cam thing and, like, tracking species is, like, the coolest thing to me. I was down there with our mutual friend, yeah. Paul Rosalie. Paul, yeah. So, obviously, he does a lot of the same stuff. Uh -huh. He has trail cams everywhere, also trying to find species that we may have never even heard of yes. in the Amazon. And he's very likely to do so yeah there i remember we were looking at some shots they had that are like hard to see because they were close but not quite close enough and he's like that's not a jaguar that's not a such and such. something different so what the yeah. fuck is that Wh yeah. which is really cool but we got to go out and actually lay a few new trail cams nice. and like see the strategy of what it is and right. we didn't even do any of the more complex stuff you were talking about like dragging a dead Scent car trails or stuff, or stuff yeah. like that but it's really wild that you that we can actually use this technology now to be able to just put it there laying laying in wait and you're going to get animals who are just in their regular ecosystem coming mm -hmm. by and they're not suspecting anything it's not just like a human sitting there or something like that it's it, it's an amazing development and it's it's evolving at such an incredible rate i was just uh, working with a woman two weeks ago in texas and she's using drone surveys uh, at day and night. So nighttime, they use thermal ones and day they use camera ones to film elephant herds. And then they take all the data of the elephants and it's incredible. It looks like something out of Iron Man. They take all these like points on the elephant's heads. And if the elephant moves its head to the left, it's telling these two animals to go this way, but this one to stay there. Whoa. If it moves, it's, you know, I'm making up the actual analysis, yeah. but it's like, it's, it's, it takes all these shots, composes them into a database, then AI runs all these analyses on it and goes, yeah, yeah, if the elephant moves left twice, nods left twice, it means be careful, there's something in the bush over there. Oh my and God. it's literally decoding the way, like, it can take a herd of elephants, go, that one's the matriarch, that one's the beta, that one's the omega, these two are the babies, this one's this, this one's telling that one this, this one's saying go over here, this one's pointing to water this way, and like, it's breaking down language that we as a human observer can watch elephants our whole life and go, yeah, I think that one's leading them that way. But this is like, no, no, he's actually saying there's water here and watch out for that bush. You know, it's like decoding the way they're communicating. And, you know, you know, like AI is garbage still. It's we're at the tip of the iceberg for what that's going to be in 10 that years. been able to actually interact with publicly. Yeah. Who knows what they got privately. True, true. Yeah. But um yeah, the technology and the data is far surpassing me dragging dead animals around in the bush. But I think one thing that we can never forget from a wildlife science standpoint, and this is something that's gone away and, and part of that book I'm writing, your gut instinct is so important. And we, science denies that, like like feverishly denies that you should listen to your gut instinct. Like field science. It goes science, against human nature. To it goes against that. human nature, but they're like, follow a protocol, create a grid. You know, so like if you're doing a camera trap survey for an mm -hmm. animal, the scientific way. You build a grid, okay, every 100 feet, 500 feet, you put a camera here, 300 feet this way, you put a camera mm -hmm. and you do a grid in a square. Why? I am a, I'm a human being, I'm a biological creature. I can look at an area and go, that's a game trail, that's where the animals will walk. There's water here, I know that they need water, they're yes. going to go to water. There's a food source here, see that beehive right there? We know that this animal eats honey. Okay, I'm gonna put three cameras here, one here and five here. Not a square grid. Like that, yeah. yes, you might cover more ground in your square grid, but use a combination of understanding yes. and not just methodology, because yeah. just methodology 
is stupid. Yeah, you answered my question for me. I was going to ask you, like, it, there's got to be room for both. Like, there I'm is. feeling it could go there, but also, like, scientifically, we got to cover X amount of space to get something realistic right. data. Right. But you got to rely on that instinct. Mm. Like, when we went to that bush, that area, that was pure instinct. It went against what I was being told, which is go up to the top where it's a little bit wetter and there's a little bit more greenery, check the high elevation. I just looked at a map and went, trees there. Yep. That's my instinct and brain going, let's go to where there's trees. If I was a tortoise, I'd want to be where there's trees. Yeah. That's it. You have such a, because you grew up among it as well, it's just second nature for you. You have that gene that you see when you go to some of these places like when i met some of paul's guys in the amazon jungle yeah. who had lived there their whole life yeah where like they'd hear a bird two miles away and they'd almost be able to talk back to it it's not they didn't have to sit there and google this stuff right. or read a book about right. it like obviously you've educated yourself over the years on a lot of different things but like you were in it you yep. grew up among it you can like not to be too meta here but you can feel it yes 100%. in ways that you know, I can't, anyone else listening pretty much can't. Right, but you sitting here can tell when something's off with the audio in your podcast exactly. or, you know, I, I, I'm not in your space, but you know, like it's just different. It's whatever you train yourself to That's have right. instinct in. You know right now whether this is a good conversation for your show or not a great conversation. It's for great, your show. by the way. That's good. I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> but you know that because this is what you're trained in. Yeah. The average person does not know that. Sure. Just like I not like Paul's guys, because I don't know the Amazon like they do, but I know big picture, if I work here, I'm more likely to find the animal or That's I'm, right. you know, and it's just, it's same if you're an investment banker, you know, like mm -hmm. this is the stocks we should trade in. Trust me, I just, I got a feeling, you know, it's yeah. just human instinct is an incredible tool. It's just cool when it overlaps with nature. I, yeah. think, I think that's like the coolest of all. I agree. Real fast for us. I just got to run to the bathroom, but we'll be right back. All right, we're back. Thank you guys for checking out this clip. If you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe and hit the like button on this video. It is a huge, huge help. And if you'd like to check out this clip's full podcast episode, that link is in the description below or right here. And finally, you can follow me on Instagram and X by using the links in my description below.